Whoa, hold on. What? What the hell? Wait, we're not in Greg's living room watching Greg act out some inane sketch about poker? That's right, you donkeys. Despite being the last place in North America to allow indoor dining, Ontario has finally allowed indoor gatherings as of yesterday, and you know your boy ran to the closest home game he could find. You can expect a lot more poker vlogs from in on out, so make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. And folks, if that's not good enough news, I've got new merch in. We've got second edition all-in sunglasses in slick black because we've almost sold out of all the yellow ones. And not only that, we've also got brand spanking new golden stay loose card protectors. These are excellent quality and done by the same guys who do Brad Owen and Rampage Poker's merch. Here's one of those guys, it's Jamie from Silver Screen Designs rocking the new sunglasses. Thank you so much, Jamie. Folks, these are limited supplies, so make sure you get yours while supplies last. And while you're there, make sure you check out some of the shirts and hoodies. They're super comfortable and soft and makes any game good. Alright, that's enough capitalistic self-promotion. Let's play some poker. 1-3 game and we buy in for $300. Okay, we start off the night folding. We fold a lot and a lot of hands because that is poker and if you're thinking Greg wow come on your motto is stay loose play seven deuce if you haven't figured it out by now that's not for me that's for you guys that's for the other people at the poker table with me I'm gonna play tight I'm gonna play right because Courtney taught me right okay so first playable hand of the night we pick up jack 10 suited in the cutoff early position limps it folds to me and I open to $20 button then moves all in for $95 the early position limper folds, and I have no choice but to fold here. Wow, poker is so much fun. Next time, we've got King Queen offsuit under the gun plus one under the gun limps, and I raise it up to $20. The small blind calls, and the original under the gun limper calls as well. Three ways to the flop in position flop is a 7 3 pride colors. We've missed on a dry board. It checks to me, and if there's anything I've learned from college, it's to not go all in when it's dry, especially when your stack is relatively large. So we make a standard C bet of $20, only putting in a little bit of our stack in, and that's enough to do the job. The players fold, and my stack gets a little bigger. Next time we pick up queen four suited in the big blind, cutoff opens to $10, button calls, and I call. Three ways to the flop, out of position, flop comes 9, 4, 3, 1 spade, I check, cutoff bets $15, button calls, and with a pair and over and a backdoor flush, I call as well. Turn brings the 10 of spades, so we do improve to a flush draw. I decide to lead out here as a blocker bet, as I don't expect to get raised that often. Now that an overcard to the 9 hits, unfortunately the cutoff now raises to $75, which is annoying, and the button folds, and in the moment I try to figure out if I have the odds to call, assuming my two pair trips and flush draw outs are live. I have 14 outs or around 28% equity. There's now 170 in the pot and I only have to put in 55 more to call. If I've done this right, I think I have 3 to 1 pot odds to call and more than 25% equity. So I think it's the right call. Additionally, since I get the read that the opponent is strong, if a spade hits, I might have a lot of implied odds as well. So after doing some mental gymnastics for about a minute, I call and the river brings the king of clubs. I hurt my brain for nothing. I check, cutoff goes all in, and I fold. Next time we've got ace king in the cutoff. We open for $15 and only the small blind calls. Heads up in position. Flop comes jack six, eight, two hearts. We've got two overs, nothing else. Small blind checks, I bet 15, and the small blind calls. Turn is the seven of clubs, so the board gets a lot more connected now. So when the small blind checks, I definitely just check back. River is the eight of spades, and when small blind checks again, I definitely don't feel like they're very strong. I think they would have let out with any straight or any eight, maybe even a jack. So it feels like they have some marginal one pair hand or a missed draw. I decide to represent my trip eights. I bet two thirds of the pot, and after a few seconds, the villain unfortunately calls. I announce ace high, and he shows pocket nines. Not running super well, and our stack has dwindled a bit, so we reload for $100. Reloaded and ready to go, we pick up a6 suited in the cutoff, early position limps, middle position opens to 15, I call, button calls, and the limper calls, 4 ways to a flop of ace, queen, 4, rainbow, early position checks, initial preflop aggressor in middle position checks, and with top pair, but very marginal kicker, I check for pot control and deception, and the button checks as well. Flop checks through. Turn is the 9 of diamonds. We have top pair and the nut flush draw. Early position now leads out for $22. Middle position folds. I don't really see any point in raising here. Like if I raise, I feel that only stronger hands than my ace are calling. And I'd only be inflating the pot for a flush that I'm not likely to hit. So we happily just flat with our top pair and our equity. River is the queen of clubs. Now early position checks and I just check it back. Villain shows king 4 for a pair of 4s. I show my ace and we take it down. Only got one suit value with my top pair. Maybe I missed some value on the river by checking. Always happy to hear your thoughts and feedback. I definitely need it. 
Big Slick slicked big on us last time, but we've got Big Slick once again. We opened to $15 under the gun, late position calls and big blind calls. Three ways to a flop of ace something something, I don't remember. I just make a C bet of 25 and both players fold. So a little tiny pot for us with Big Slick. Next time we downgrade from ace king off to king queen off, low jack opens to 15, I call in the cutoff, heads up in position to a flop of a 4-5 king, two diamonds, preflop aggressor checks, I bet 10 and he calls. Turns the eight of hearts after preflop aggressor checks, flop and now turn, I really don't feel like they have much. I don't have many draws to protect against, and I typically only like getting two streets of value with top pair hands, so I check back for pot control and deception. River comes the nine of spades, when he checks once more, I bet on the larger side, betting 35. I want it to look like I have a missed flush draw, or I'm just trying to steal the pot after he's checked all three streets. I fast roll my king, it's good, and we scoop the pot. Biggest pot of the night, buckle in folks. After an under the gun limp, we open to under the gun plus one to $18. We get no respect, and we get four callers. Fuck my life, off to a flop we go. The flop is ace, ace, 10, two spades. We drill trips multi-way, my life is freaking great. Checks to me, and yes, I have trips but with my marginal kicker, I check for pot control and deception, and it checks around. Turn is the king of hearts. When it checks to me again, I make a big bet of 70, targeting anyone with a king, and only the big blind calls. River is the six of diamonds. Big blind checks to me once more. Really feels like they have a king here, and I go for the overbet shove. I shove for around 289 into 240. I hope it looks like a missed spades draw. I'm praying that this player calls with his king. He shouldn't think I have an ace after checking the flop. Let's check in with some table talk. I don't think I'm bluffing this time, bro. Sorry, guys. Just give me like one more. Great, 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 great. Want to show if I fold? Great, go silent. I'll show, I'll show. I'll show you Ace is good. I think we're dropping. Yeah. Good job. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sucks. I'm chopping it up with trips. I really didn't expect him to have an ace there and tank for that long with it, especially when I check flop. Uh, unfortunate chop there. Unfortunate chop. And guess what? Now we're tilted. And what's the best thing to do when you're tilted? That's right. It's play a double board bomb pot. Everyone puts in $10 pre-flop and we go straight to two flops and two runouts. I throw in a pair of all-in sunglasses as well just for fun. Uh, straight up, I played this like shit and was tilted after chopping the last pot. I don't really have detailed notes on this hand. I only took notes on the flop, basically, because I just kind of packed up and left with my tail between my legs right after this. But basically, I have queen 10 of diamonds, board came, jack 6 ace, brick brick, and 4 10k brick brick. I got strung along with my gut shot and second pair, and eventually on the river, the villain moved all in. I gamble, gamble, hoping he's only strong on the top board, and I may be good with my second pair on the second board. So I call, and the villain shows king 10 for top two on the bottom board, and king high on the top board, and he scoops the entire thing. Wow, that really sucks. This is gonna fuck. Call, call. King 10. Ayo! <laughs> what can you call it with that? Nice, 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 nice. I'm surprised you played. I know, I know. Well, it can only go up from here. Stay loose, play seven deuce. I'll see you next time. Hey, thank you all so much for watching and making it all the way to the end. Quick reminder that my meetup game is happening in Toronto this Tuesday. We'll be playing the 7 Deuce game, I'll be selling merch, and Courtney will be there too. So make sure you join my Discord server for more information, link in the description below. And speaking of Courtney, since we're going to start traveling and playing poker all over the world soon, she started an Instagram page called Courtney Goes. So make sure you simp for her, I mean follow her there. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart for being here, and I hope you all have a great day.